Hi, I'm Diane McGarry with Drake at Arts. With me today, our co-host, Tom McGarry, also with Drake at Arts, guitarist, Robert Beckers, and ASL interpreter, Mary. Dutch guitarist, Robert Beckers, musical education started with general music theory, recorder, French horn, and trumpet. The guitar entered shortly after with a self-constructed instrument. Wow, I can't believe you made your own instrument. <laughs> That's incredible to me. Soon after well, he discovered so his life. Yeah, my what? father was a carpenter, so I kind of like had access to the tools and woods, and so oh. that helped. Right? Wow, yeah, yeah, you'll have to tell us more about that in a minute. Let me finish oh. telling people Sorry, how yep. beautiful you are. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Robert decided to pursue a career as a guitarist and earned his performing and teaching degrees, both a bachelor and a master's of music at the Conservatory of Machtik, um, which I'm sure I didn't pronounce well. During his seven years there, he won a scholarship to study contemporary music with Angelo Gila, um, Gilardino in Italy. He received master classes for internationally known guitarists such as David Russell, Alexander Frocci, and Pepe Romano. Robert is adept as a soloist and chamber musician, playing with orchestras and choirs, as well as giving solo rehearsals. Visionary artist Elliot Fisk invited him to complete his master, his doctor rather, in musical arts in classical guitar at the New England Conservatory, which he has done. Also a te teacher, Robert is affiliated with the nationally renowned South Shore Conservatory in Hingham, Massachusetts, and is a guitar instructor at the faculty of Gordon College in Wenham, Massachusetts and the Middlesex Community College in Lowell. Robert, we're so glad to have you back again. This is wonderful to see you. You are such a fine musician. And so you're gonna tell us about being a craftsman too, huh? How you, <laughs> your father helped you make your guitar. Well, that always fascinates me when people yes, do something like that. I, I learned the trade, roughly speaking, from my father because he was very, very busy in working. And uh, only recently he uh, confessed to me that he would work throughout the week to pay the mortgage and the weekends to feed us. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, to spend time with him basically meant you would stand next to him in his workshop and uh, just hold the chisel, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, at a very young age, that's how I picked it up. And in fact, uh, since the pandemic, I've picked up a carpentry and uh, that's Ooh. a part of the job for me now. Wow. Yeah. It's a so very you interesting a combination. Lot to... You have to chisel like... to make a guitar? Uh, I used, uh, well, it's a, oh gosh, it's a, it's a block plane, but it's a special kind that you can use for shaping. Uh, I don't know the English word for it. Uh, it's basically a short bed block plane. Maybe that's the best way to say it. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, so for myself, I always thought uh, doing this kind of work is uh, dangerous, uh, being a guitarist. Oh. Uh, but uh, I have to say, it's not bad at all, as long as I make sure that I don't work too many long hours in a row and I keep uh, focusing on, on guitar and keep listening to music, play some, you know. And so, you can't hurt your fingers while you're playing. No, no planing your, your fingers. Oh my God. No, always gloves and always caution. Always. Okay. Mm. Yes, absolutely. But that's good for anybody doing carpentry. I think so. I, I think in general, Labor, physical labor is good for everybody. Because, mm. you know, using the body uh, grounds you in a simplistic way, putting it really. Huh. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to um, jump in on Maastricht. That's the uh, way that town is. It's the southern, most southern town of uh, the Netherlands. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. And it was uh, Pepe Romero. Mm. The Romeros are a guitar family, quite uh, famous. Mm. I knew I would mispronounce things. Thank you. I know, you. I, know. I really thing. appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> You're very gracious about it. <laughs> oh, so what have you been up to since we last saw you besides doing some carpentry fitting in and, you know, continuing to improve your already wonderful skill and musician? Well, yeah, I started a program to record all the known fugues that are ever played on the guitar by Bach. Oh, wow. um, but that's an all of program and it's, uh, it's so much work that I uh, had to step away from it every now and then. So that's on the on the back burner basically. And uh, I've been doing some musicals recently and about uh, teaching still, sure. uh, playing with other people, um, mostly weddings. I haven't done a lot of real, real concerts, um, if you so, can make the distinction. Yeah, yeah, no, but what inspired you to want to do all the Bach music? That's a huge undertaking. 
Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> um, I think it, it, maybe in the back of my mind, I wanted to do something profound mm. as a sort of statement. Uh, I have been, well, since the beginning of the pandemic, things were getting a little watered down. Mm. And so I felt like I have to find something profound, meaningful mm. and deep. Um, I think uh, there's, there's plenty of guitars playing Bach, by the way. So I will not be by myself, but there's something about Bach that teaches you a lot about yourself too, and about your vision and about who you are, how you function as a guitarist and a musician. Yeah. It's a remarkable, remarkable uh, compositions that he wrote. Well, he's not an easy composer. <laughs> People no. think he is, but he's not. He's no, not. he's not, no. He was in it. I have never heard anybody think that, by the way. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I mean, that would be very uninformed to have such an opinion about Bach. <laughs> uh, who else? What other composers do you really you enjoy? Oh, uh, I, know, I like a lot of composers. And since I've been doing a lot of background music and musicals, I've been uh, engaging with uh, a lot of, well, I couldn't say instant music, but really that's what it is. I learn a piece and I play it once and then that's it. Oh. And I only get a few days to do so. And... Uh, the dynamics of that process are very nice because it, it makes you feel very productive huh. in comparison to struggling with Bach for half a year and getting nothing finished. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> uh, well, it is much more immediate. So you must be an incredible sight reader as well to be able to do that. Uh, on my good days, I'm quite all right. But the funny thing, it goes up and down. If I have an off day, if I didn't sleep well or uh, have some things in my mind, uh, it, everything goes goes bad. It's it's. A remarkable thing to ha to see happening to myself, and I know how good I can be. So when those things happen, it's like what? <laughs> <laughs> so you have to just at some point uh, accept that you are not always the same man. Sometimes you're just oh yeah, uh, yeah, not as capable. That's very interesting because um, I was having a discussion with someone the other day about how in the course of my lifetime and yours too. We've been recording things, yes? Recording has gotten to be so incredible and it's a wonderful gift, but everything has to be perfect for the recording. And we forget that live performance isn't perfect. Mm -hmm. right? and, and sometimes people can play very technically perfect, but there's no warmth and mm -hmm. there's no emotion. There's no living spirit in the music too so there's all these dynamics of performing that we we kind of take for granted now you know listening to cds or unfortunately having zoom performances because we can't do this in person anymore but you know there's a difference there's a dynamic between a live audience and a musician that's very mm -hmm. uh, there's an energy there that's just an amazing thing to have yeah and, absolutely you know, and we also, um, we don't expect you to be perfect. We just expect you to touch us, you know. Oh, that's very nice. Well, it's, um, I think the um, there's a uh, temporary aspect to playing live. Mm. It has to happen then, and if it happens, it happens. There's no going back, and that brings a certain, uh, a, a little bit of uh, anxiety with it. Maybe a little nervousness sometimes. Um but uh, everybody knows it, it, the stakes are high because the audience knows you could make big mistakes or for, for lose your train of thought. I've seen the greatest uh, having those moments where they have to restart a piece. Um, and yeah, that's a part of the live performance. And on a CD, well, yeah, they could have taken cuts anywhere. I mean, nowadays you can very easily um, play a piece three times and slice in the best moments and yeah. make sure that there's no imperfections, which is excellent, of course. I mean, it's very nice to, to be exposed to that, but besides the fact that it's not always real <laughs> because it's edited, there's also always a button that you can switch off and you can go back to it later. And that, so the, the momentum of live performance is totally lost there. Right, right, right. Because you have an arc within a piece. Yep. And if you're picking different different performances that have a different arc it's you can't transfer the arc yeah. 
<laughs> no, but there's a, there's a lot possible if you do a high edit recordings, so For to speak. Sure. There's a lot possible. Yeah. Um, yeah, when it comes to, to guitar and, and interpretation, a lot of it is also the tone of your guitar, of the tone that you produce on your instrument, because well, the guitar is the guitar. And then, of course, the dynamic range that you have at your uh, possession. Yeah. Which I think for the guitar is a big challenge because it's a difficult instrument to play loud and still have control. Huh. Just that. You don't have any problems with that. <laughs> I know I can be loud. <laughs> so, but there, you're always, there's an intensity and a vitality in your playing. Well, thank you. That's wonderful to hear. I really, really appreciate that. You're very present with your instrument and with the music. I think as a guitarist yourself, you have a very, very high standard for playing and being musical on the guitar. Diane, as a singer, uh, has high standards, but she's not a technical guitar player. And I'm, I don't play any instruments. I don't sing. I just enjoy the music. So uh, you were talking earlier how sometimes in a live performance, there's some small mistakes. And in a way, that's almost part of the charm, the immediacy that this is a real experience. This is a person, you know, it's a conversation more than just this perfect technical thing. So anyway, thank you. Well, that was actually the word I was looking for, the immediacy of, of the experience and the, the interaction. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, so with regards to performing on Zoom, because that was part of the experience, uh, it was a good thing both of you were there uh, because you were actually an audience yeah. and uh, our technician was exactly that. He was a technician. So he had his mind focused on uh, the sound quality, if there were yeah. any issues with it. And that's not really a, a, um, an audience because his well, ears are critical and I know it and he knows it. And <laughs> <laughs> well, he's in a different place. No, that's why we, first of all, we love hearing you play. But second of all, we want to give you someone who's live and sitting in front of you, who's responding to what you're giving, you know. It, right, right. Because I know it makes a difference. Yeah. Well, there is this, this, um, this greater element of, of, of being human being, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, of being a conscious entity, to get a little broader. Um, and I think a lot of people would, uh, refer to it as a spirit in everything, mm -hmm. that you can feel connection with people. and. You cannot have that uh, directly over Zoom. There's a time lag and there's a screen. And uh, in the live performance, that's, uh, I think, what you hope for. Yeah. Because uh, the moment you, you connect with somebody else at that level, not just because you have a conversation, but because there's an, a sympathy or maybe even deeper, mm -hmm. uh, it makes us realize that there's uh, more to us than just a body and a mind. Yeah. I could say it like that. I, I, I must be very cautious with using these words because I have very little practice with them. <laughs> You're doing fine. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, knowing that there's more than, personally, I am a very spiritual person. So to me, there is more than body and mind. There's this whole soul and spirit going on. And, and music comes directly from the spheres, right? We talk about that all the time. Yeah, we did, yeah. It's, it's a remarkable thing. And I, I'm very much involved with mechanics of music, right? I play the guitar, which is mechanical to a high degree. And then, for example, music by Bach is also very mechanical in many right. ways. Uh, but behind all that, or above all that, within all that, right? there's something just, yeah, of a higher value. I mean, if you play box music on a computer and you don't do anything with it, just let the computer do it, it's going to be perfect. Mm. It's going to be as dull as it can get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no excitement in it at all. And so what you said was we need the humanity. Yeah, we need ourself in there. Yeah. That, that warmth, that color. Yeah. yeah I think so, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's, that's an interesting observation, the color that you just said that, because um, when I teach my students, I say that this is uh, the best way to use the mechanics of your finger. But the tone that you're gonna produce is also dependent on your whole body because your shoulder has a certain weight and that if impact impacts the momentum of your arm and your fingers have a certain speed, your nails have a certain shape. All these things uh, make a, a very small nuance. Um, yeah, I once observed that there's no two people with the exact same voice. Mm. And I don't know if that's true, but 
I would believe it. Mm. And it's the same with the guitar. There's no two people that sound the exact same way. Yeah. Well, because I thought you were going to say there's no two people with the exact same hand, right? And you're yeah. using your yeah. hand to play that. And, and as you said, it's not just the hand, it's the arm all the way up to the shoulder and really the whole body and the presence yep. that you bring in your physical. Yeah, because if you breathe in, just a simple example, and then the shoulder position changes, everything slightly aligns differently. Mm. So, and of course, it's not just the hands, it's also the ears, right? Everybody has different li listening experiences and different reference points, and that is going to affect their way of, of pro projecting something. So what do you think is the most important thing um, that you bring to your music? That I bring to my music? Yeah. Oh. Oh, I find that a very, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is that too big a question? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, mean, I just really try to to, uh, to shape every melody in a way that it, it's complete and that it brings a certain emotion and an emotional response. Mm -hmm. um, and I try to uh, play it as as effective as possible so that I can uh, be relaxed. Uh, yeah, I try to just bring attention and, and invest my time in it. So when you get a new piece, do you like to read through it all yourself or hear someone else play it in their interpretation? How do you approach a new piece, a new work? Um, well, I like to listen to, to the music and uh, I sometimes have to make myself listen to, obviously I rather jump into the score, but I know listening to music and understanding the, the, the larger picture is incredibly uh, beneficial to learning a new piece. Mm -hmm. And music is, is uh, incomplete in, as, in, as it's not in its notation. Yes. But if, like for, in the case of Bach, you can get the mechanics of the music, but then you have to make sense of it. Because if I play, sometimes I play a piece like, it makes no sense, like, where is this going, what's happening? I have to pick it apart and place in a different manner through a, a phrase and I say, oh wait, this is what's happening. And then I start listening, hearing the harmonics, I say, oh, and that is the underlying current, that this is what the composer uh, was intending, that was, that was the direction there. Um, and so if I listen to the piece a few times before I start digging, digging in, I hear these things almost instantaneously. Huh. And then I can also hear like, yeah, but that, that person didn't hear it and he's or he, she <laughs> not presenting it correctly because that piece of information is missing. Yeah, wow. Well, that's also your depth of understanding and your life experience, right? You're bringing all that with you. Yes, yes. Yeah, and I did, I made a, a real point when I was studying uh, that I understood uh, and met, well, master is a big word because I'm not a composer, but I, that I really understood uh, the language of uh, the 18th and 19th century. Oh. It's class, traditional music theory, basically. Oh. And uh, yeah, I've got a good uh, good eye and ear for it. I can see it really quickly and I can hear it almost instantaneously. Mm. Mm. Wow. Which helps. Yeah, it shows in your playing. There's a real depth of understanding there. Mm. Thank you. No, that's, that's good to hear because, you know, sometimes like I do all these things and I talk to people and people are like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but in general, the music that I hear uh, in daily life uh, that I don't choose myself is just... Uh, a pop song, and there's nothing wrong with a pop song, of course, but it, it doesn't have that depth. Yeah. It's much more about the voice and, and the words that that person is singing. Right. And the, and the beat nowadays, of course, very important. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Back to the jungle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's physical, right? It's, it's a very physical sport. And then my, my music is much more uh, of the heart and the mind, and, mm. uh, more holistic. Mm. Because the body, as you said earlier, the body is still involved, but in a much different, more mm. complete way. It's interesting. I don't think of it as being intellectual, but you're right. It is. It just. Did, but I didn't use the word intellectual, I believe. Did no, I? no, I know you didn't, but it is. I know, but it's. Yeah, you said mind and heart, which is a little different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really mean it different too. I mean, if you look at the composers of the day, I mean, Bach was very much involved in, in honoring um, God in his music, but also um, invoking uh, higher sentiments in people, in the listener. Mm -hmm. 
And, uh, and well, when you listen to pop music, uh, that's of course nuances, but uh, it, let's say as a general tendency, the only uh, response that is invoked is excitement and, and mostly of the lower primal kind. <laughs> I'm interested when you're playing really, really well, both technically and musically, as you described before, to, to get the arc or the flow of the piece. Uh, I would guess maybe you feel very relaxed when you're doing all these things at the same time, or, or do you? Yeah, it, it can be. Um, sometimes the music is demanding, and when my finger are a little uh, out of shape because I didn't play enough, okay. then it's a bit of a struggle. Uh, but there's moments that things fly, and it's just oh. that's really amazing when that happens. Oh. And of course, uh, you would wish that was always the case, but I also like to just hang out sometimes and have a beer. And, <laughs> and the next day, usually <laughs> things don't fly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> there's that human aspect there. Sure, yeah. In the, yeah. Was there anything else you'd like to ask? Was, was there ever a time you made, I don't know, a, a very bad technical mistake, but could still uh, get at the higher flow and arc of the music? The, the, I can tell you about a few very bad experiences that I've had, and one of them was just lack of care for my nails and then forgetting a nail file and then oh, coming no, for no. a show and I couldn't fix my nail and then I'm just miserable and oh. that shows, of course. Yeah. And uh, once I showed up in Indonesia of all places for a concert with um, a Dutch flute player and I had, uh, you know, those sleeves where you have this little thing oh, that yeah. was Definitely. together, yeah, I forgot those. Oh, no. <laughs> and, then, and I had a brand new guitar and it, it didn't work. It, it, it was, uh, the sound was, uh, because it was electrified, Oh. And it, it would uh, break, and then oh, uh, no. I, was, uh, I was so stressed. It was not funny. Wow. I got yelled at too. So well, I'm sure. <laughs> a lot of very practical mechanical considerations. Just yeah, to yeah. Establish yeah. the base from which you can begin to do the music. It was also my first time flying long distance. In fact, ah. it was my very first time in the plane, and so everything was adding up to a, a unique experience. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, your first time in a plane that long. Yeah, being on long flights is difficult. It's yeah, really difficult. From, but I think that was still like 10 hours or so. Mm -hmm. And I arrived a day early too, so I had to go to the hotel by myself and just hang out and the rest of the band came the next day. It was a very strange experience. And there was a time difference, different culture. I mean, Indonesia is a, well, it's topical. It's warm, it has this special sense in the air and it's noisy, there's traffic everywhere. It's a little bit of insanity mixed in. <laughs> yeah, just flying on a plane, the air is so dry that affects, you know, your, at least your, your head and your uh, your breathing or your nasal passages, maybe even your lungs. So that alone could uh, make a big change. So. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's uh, almost everything that uh, I could say was a negative experience in, in my past has been preparation and, and being ready uh, in many ways, not just Playing, playing the music, but also be ready mentally, physically, and, and with gear and all everything that, that's part of the whole ex experience. Um, hmm. Well, we have to not end with a negative like that. So what has been your best optimum performance? <laughs> or one of uh, them. Well, I said earlier, right? That there's these moments where your fingers just fly and everything happens and there's just no limits. And hmm. I think that is maybe the, the, the uh, last element because we spoke earlier about there's so much more to music. And um, after all these years of pr practicing, going to school at that age as well for my doctor, uh, there's still so much more. And even in Bach, I can look and, and see new things and have new experience. And yeah, yeah it, it, uh, it, it absolutely seems endless. Mm -hmm. I have not reached a point where I feel like, oh, no, no, everything. Oh. Done. <laughs> so. So, yeah, maybe you know that Ben Newton wrote his, uh, his Principia, uh, that uh, people said to uh, young students, there's no point studying uh, science because we know everything right. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now we know better, of course, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's just endless. Yeah. We can keep digging and that makes it uh, a lifelong experience. Mm -hmm. Yes, and a very exciting one.
Well, thank you so much for being with us and including us on your journey of music. Yeah, and Tom, thank you for having me. <laughs> so, so great to be out there again and playing. I should be doing it more regularly again because I need that kind of experience too. Well, and of course, Mary, thank you for your uh, sign language, which I know what they supposed to mean, but... <laughs> 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 we look forward to your performance on our November Arts Saturday, and we'd mm. like to thank our sponsors, especially the Massachusetts Cultural Council grants, as administered by the Bill Ricca and Drake Cultural Councils. For more information about our Arts Saturdays, or to be a sponsor, please go to drakeitarts.com. Bye, everybody. <laughs>